hey guys what's up it's my birthday and i'm getting ready because i'm having a solo dinner to celebrate and just do introspection i wanted to take some time alone I'm turning 31 and 30 was such a crazy intense year there were so many changes and i don't even know if i'm ready to go into it right now <laughs> maybe tomorrow but um yeah i'm just getting ready it's a bit of a like rainy day so i don't want to wear too much makeup but i do have some darkness around the eye and i want to take care of that so i'm just taking a peachy concealer just to correct that a little bit probably a little bit too much peach but i'll go over it with a yellow base concealer but you can see how much of a difference that makes i don't know if you guys have had a wild year too it feels like energies were shifting like oh my god since last year so much and i'm grateful to have made it <laughs> this far but i freaking i think i've mentioned this before but but i quit my job in february I used to work at a site called vivala.com, but it folded, so um, I ended up leaving the company. I did have another opportunity, but I decided that it was time for me to move on up from them. So that happened in February, and I've been like freelancing since then, uh, still writing for two sites. One is called Mamas Latinas, which is ironically was owned by the same company <laughs> um but no not anymore um so i freelanced for them and i was freelancing for another site that was very similar to Vivilla called hip latina uh it's just very sad that a lot of these sites that cater to latinos don't last long but mamas latinas has been around for a hot minute and Hip Latina has been around for at least three years, so hopefully they can survive. But it just makes me really sad how everything comes and goes, and especially for writers and other people in the industry, it's just like you can't breathe, you know? You don't know what's gonna last. Like the other day, like, I don't know, I really think Me Too was doing it so well. That's another, like, website media company. I really loved what they do on social media. And then I heard that there was, like, a huge layoff the other day. So, really sad about that because I really think they do really great content. But it's unfortunate that they had to do a huge cut. And once again, you know, young Latinos, creatives, having to like scramble and find something new and like leave and end up leaving the industry because it's so unstable. And that's how I feel. Kind of feel like, oh, I'll just do my own thing and find another industry for full time work. Because let's be honest, YouTube is so unpredictable as much as i love it and think about it and like oh i could i would i could do this full time i don't know if it's worth it it's really scary so career wise i'm like what do i do now you know i was in finance for so long should i go back to that would they take me back i don't know um what do i do i'm like also like bored with the content that's out there or like not to say that everyone's making boring stuff it's not like i'm looking at everything that's being made but in women's lifestyle it's like so hard to find things that are unique i think some people do it really well but i'm just bored 
oh, I'm just bored. I don't know what I want to put out there myself. Um, I feel that personally, like so many of us, we're just like figuring it out. Just figuring life out. Just trying to live. This position that I'm in now, that's not where I thought I would be at this age. But I'm on this path for a reason, right? So I guess it'll all make sense when I'm older. But it's hard. <laughs> I want it to make sense now. I guess patience is one of those things I need to work on. Um, Cause I just get so easily overwhelmed just thinking of like starting over again and all the work that I have to put in when I've already put in work so many other times for other things that didn't pan out. And then I'm like, oh, should I go back to school? But what about all the debt? Do I want to do that? I'm almost done paying off my 10 year plan for undergrad just to get in an even larger amount of debt. Uh, I don't know. I'm definitely gonna, like I would have to take out the entire amount of a master's. And yeah, I could go abroad, it's cheaper actually. But do I want to? I don't know if I wanna leave everything to go to Europe and spend a year doing something that I don't even know if that's what I wanna do. Uh, I have some ideas. <laughs> and there's actually like a an opportunity I'm really excited about, but I haven't really heard from it, and it would just be like a startup again, which is scary, but I've like set aside time to like brainstorm and stuff, and hopefully something comes out of that, because that actually sounds really amazing, and maybe it's like the answer to like what I've been searching for, what should I do, which I've been thinking about since I quit. Not that I feel like I've had time to think, like that was the intention of quitting, like let me reset. And then I started freelancing and I traveled and even in my travels, I was constantly doing something so I didn't have time to think about what I want. It was color correcting some hyperpigmentation back here. I haven't had time to think really. But I get cool ideas from time to time. And then with YouTube, when they made their big shift, I got dropped out of the partner program. So it's like kind of disheartening a little bit to like, dang, I was like an OG. Like you would think they wouldn't take me out. I was like ready to do it full time. And now I gotta like work all over again to qualify and then who knows if it's like worth it. So I think that's really what's like holding me back. It's like, who knows, who knows? There's so many things I can do. I have so many skills. And then nothing seems enough when I look at job applications or I'm overqualified. So I've applied to a couple of things here and there, here and there. And I haven't really like gone through like a legit like job application interview process since I graduated from college, which is nine years ago. So it's a long time to be out of that game and then now everything's all different. I'm gonna bake under the eyes. 
so much for not doing a lot <laughs> a lot of makeup but I didn't really put on foundation I just blended out the concealer so I'm just trying this powder underneath the eyes the controversial Huda Beauty <laughs> baking powder I got the color banana bread and what a scandal that was if you guys don't know about it basically Huda Beauty was accused of stealing the concept for the ad campaign uh, from this company an indie company called Beauty Bakery and their whole concept just like the name says it's like everything has like a baking theme to it um, they have a baking powder a face powder that comes in like a little flower bag very cute so it looks like you're getting a bag of flour to kick your face <laughs> so yeah um so the they had like an ad campaign i don't know i don't remember if it was for the flower but basically the same thing with the whisking with a bowl and then huda beauty she did like a very like 1950s housewife twist to it whereas the beauty bakery one the woman was like on the floor with her whisk but a little more modern but yeah they like dragged huda beauty for filth you know they called her a thief um and it was just like so weird because she did has i don't know if at this point but and the way she tried to like clean it up she never gave a shout out to beauty bakery she never mentioned them and it's so weird because Huda Beauty's Instagram, like, all they do is repost, 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 right? For the most part, that's most of the content. Sharing stuff from the community. Community that uses Beauty Bakery. Why not acknowledge them? Like, let's say you didn't steal from them. This was your original idea. It's a coincidence that, you know, both images look similar. Why not say, oh, I love their products, oh, I really respect them, but it's not, you know, I didn't copy them. Or maybe say you were inspired by them, like, what's the harm in that? Like, I didn't steal, I was inspired by them. And then go into, like, your vision board, because she went on, I think it was IGTV, and she showed her, like, mood board for that launch. And telling us all about the references that she used never mentioning beauty bakery at all and it she put that out there after the controversy came out so it was obviously in response to that to be like i didn't steal but then you never acknowledge them so i don't know it was like a very weird situation and it's a shame because it's actually a really good powder so now I'm sitting there like, what do I do? Do I return it? And he, I'm using it here. Just like, even if you didn't, I acknowledge them. I think it's only right. Because you're looking pretty bad out here. But I also think it's dangerous to throw the word thief out there um and then get sued so i don't know why people feel so comfortable saying that she stole but that's just me really excited for dinner um i'm here in philly and i remember years ago i was here for made in america i've been to made in america a couple of times that's jay-z's music festival which totally got the boot um was it the i think it was the mayor that was like i'm good love enjoy and was like we're not hosting it on the benjamin franklin parkway anymore and didn't even like talk to jay-z before like anybody from i guess rock nation it was just like surprised they found out in the newspaper that they weren't gonna get to come back like what would you do <laughs> i would be so annoyed that you didn't even have a conversation or at least email me first like hey guys we're not gonna have you come back again and then put out the newspaper article 
Like, I don't understand how a government office can do, can function that way. Like, give them a chance to fight. Maybe they could have given you guys more money. And apparently they brought a lot of business to the city and a lot of tourism. So I don't understand because it's like noisy for two days. The people who live there couldn't take it. Like, come on. It's good for the city. It brought me here. I had never been to Philly until Made in America. And I came multiple times, you know, stayed in hotels, gave the city business. So, very unfortunate that they made that decision, but I wonder what's gonna happen. Like, I wonder where it'll go. Like, are they gonna keep it in Pennsylvania? In Philadelphia, but a different part of it? I mean, I feel like I would be like deuces and just bring it to another place. Maybe they can do it in DC, I don't know. I feel like it would get the same crowd. And I really liked Made in America because I went when it was starting. So it wasn't as big yet. So I really like enjoyed myself because of the crowd wasn't overwhelming. Like, yeah, there were a lot of people, but not like Coachella or Ultra. Those are other festivals that I've been to. Governor's Ball. I'm just not about that life anymore. So I feel like I would only go to a music festival at this point if I had VIP tickets. Like, I'm not fighting to be in the front. I remember one year at Coachella. I only been to Coachella once, but when I went to Coachella, I freaking almost got my leg broken in a mosh pit. All right, because they just started like jumping out of, up and down out of nowhere. Okay, it was the year of the Tupac hologram. That's the year that I went, right? And so in music festivals, if I'm in a group, I have a tendency to go off by myself because I have a different music preference, right? So I love hip hop. And again, Tupac Hologram, Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre. It was like a, gr a crazy, crazy year. Um, I was really excited. Oh my God, like my first big music festival. I need to be as close to the front as I can. Right before Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre, there was this like rock band and so they they're like so strategic they like mix everything up and so really if you're not a fan of certain music you're gonna have to like endure um, just to see your favorite act so you can spend your entire day in one spot you can't even use the bathroom because you can't leave you will not get your spot back like good luck so what do you call it it was like a rock band before the snoop dogg set and when those people started playing, the people next to me, it's like they lost all sense of time and space and they started jumping up and down, moshed, stomping on me. I lost my shoelace. Okay, like that goes, like how do you lose your shoelace? I lost my shoelace. I don't know if my shoe came off too, but I had my shoes. I was missing a shoelace and somebody that was with me, like we weren't even standing next to each other. They were just also like in that area but we weren't like watching together found my shoelace like how <laughs> it was a white shoelace it wasn't even unique but i got my shoelace back so don't worry but it was like unreal and i just can't and oh i remember one year it was governor's ball kanye west the crowd was so crazy like you if you look at videos if you've never been and you see those seat of people, it's scary to be in because God forbid you need to use the bathroom, you can't move. And there, I think it was that year that I felt like I couldn't even breathe. There was no wind or anything and I'm just like, you know, surrounded and I can't get out. <sighs> this girl, she literally squatted down next to me and my friend to pee. Like she peed in the crowd because she could not leave. So, you know, it's just the kind of stuff that I don't want to go through. Like, I, I don't need to see anybody that bad. <laughs> All right, I saw Beyonce. 
from the comfort of my own home in the middle of the night. I was, where was I? Oh, I went to um, a Selena party, theme party in New York. Cause Coachella was the same week. Like week one was the same week as her birthday. And so fans all over the country, they have events in her honor. And I went to one in New York. It was so dope, but I freaking shut down the club. I was there until like probably 3 a.m., maybe later. And when I got home the next day, I stayed up. The, well, I guess it was the next day. When I got home, I stayed up and watched the whole Coachella set. Like, I was not missing it. It was so good. Oh, here it is. I just got an Ofra highlighter the other day. I'm kind of like low-key excited. I know it's like messed up, but low-key excited that I never bought anything from them because now I have the new packaging which is so nice i love white packaging so i'm gonna put a little bit more highlighter on her it's my birthday i had put on this becca one that i love i don't i think it was it's limited edition but they might still have it again i love white packaging and dreamsicle so it's such a cute little orange color you don't really see it though it's just like a golden glow with a peachy undertone so gotta lay that down and then I don't know I feel like I need to put the over on with a fingertip to make it like beam even though you guys can kind of see it but this lighting is trash from this hotel bathroom but yeah this is if I didn't mention it this is Rodeo Drive so nice golden gosh here we go doing the most doing the most okay okay I don't know what I'm gonna get oh god I have a lot on I really oh my gosh hold on I put this all over my nose so I really want to get this squid ink pasta but this place also has really good looking pizza. So I'm kind of gonna beast and order a pizza and the pasta. It's my birthday. I made a reservation on open table and everything and I was like, it's my birthday. <laughs> so much for not wearing a lot of makeup because I totally did bring an eyeshadow palette with me. I brought the Fenty Beauty Moroccan Spice, which I love, and I, I've done two videos using it. Oh, and I was like so disappointed because the second look I did, I loved even more than the first one, but the first one got so many more views. The second one, I don't even think hit a thousand. Very sad. Okay, so I'm just gonna take this color here, come and get it, cum and get it with a max 24 and then I'm just gonna put that all over the lid and into the crease and then I'm just gonna put like a shimmery Stila color on top so I have cumin get it all over my eye blend it up now I'm gonna add some Stila this is in the color wanderlust I freaking am obsessed with these Glitter and Glow Liquid Eyeshadows. I think everybody is. This one is pink with like a gold shift to it. Let's see how it looks on this eyeshadow. Oh, it's like pulling more pink. It's so pretty. Oh, it's so good. Just gonna tap it in. Spread it out. It's so nice. All right, let's put some on this side. Look at that, y'all, yes. intensity. I have my L'Oreal Lash Paradise. And then I'm gonna put some MAC on top because that one is waterproof. So I'm just gonna be quick. I do typically like a lot of volume, but I'm not gonna do too much. So it's like feathery. And then I'm gonna take Extended Play Lash. 
which is amazing for the lower lash line and I'm gonna do a coat on top and this makes them like super stringy so I don't like to use it solo on my top lashes but I'm just doing a bit of a top coat situation and then on the bottom I don't want like long lashes coated in mascara so I'm literally just stamping at the root to give a little smokiness and it just defines them right at the root and you don't get Mascara all the way to the tips. I'm like, am I even gonna use this video? Is it too dark? <laughs> but I just like just talking and I know it's like boring, but these are the kind of videos that I wanna do. Tell my stories. <laughs> Get ready. Like go to a real place, not just like put on makeup that I'm gonna wash right off. Unless it's like a palette I'm really excited about to try. Which is what happened with the Fenty one. And I did like two videos on it. Alright, so I'm just touching the roots. The rootage. And then the lips. I'm going to keep nude since I'm going to eat. That's, what, that's how I typically do it. On this lipstick. Tom Ford Nude Vanilla. Beautiful. That's it. I'm kidding. And then on the sides, I'm going to do Ophelia by Kat Von D. I typically do Dose of Colors, Knock on Wood. I've been doing that for months combined with this lipstick. And then I do the Fenty Beauty lip gloss on top, the Gloss Bomb. Such a good combo. But... I, my knock on wood, I don't think it's in that bag. This is a lighter version of this, of that combo. Honestly, I don't even need the Tom Ford with the Kat Von D because I use the Tom Ford to lighten knock on wood. This is already lighter. But I like the two textures. It feels more comfortable than just wearing a liquid lip on its own. And then I like the gloss on top because it makes it not look as dead. That's such a cute little lip. 